Mic Check, a show geared to hear the voices of young people in New York City. Our mission is to inform the youth on major events, protests, and political agendas that matter to us the most. All of us shall rise too. On this very special episode of Mic Check, we will cover a two-part episode on the two-day workshop event called the Community Cop Watch Conference held in late September and the Stop and Frisk City Hall meeting held on November 6, 2013. As we begin our episode, we will first touch bases at the point in the Bronx for a quick synopsis of the Community Cop Watch Conference that focuses on training and informing New York City working class families and citizens on not only the importance of knowing your rights when dealing with an officer, but training the community as a whole to engage in holding and monitoring the police accountable for their actions when they are protecting and serving the city. Well, my name is Age. I'm the Coalition Coordinator for People's Justice for Community Control and Police Accountability. It's a coalition made up of Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, the Justice Committee, and CAB organizing Asian communities. And we're here today at a Cop Watch conference that we've organized that has people not only from across New York City, but also people from all across the country, people from all over the place, coming to share skills and learn more and find best practices to utilize uh, within cop watching and watching the police to try to help keep our communities safer. Taking also adding on to that, if, if, I, if I can, it's not just it's not just uh, recording and documenting police when there's an incident. It's just holding them accountable. The moment that they do, the moment that they, if I'm a police officer, the moment I step forward to do something to you, there's nine of us right there. Like, go ahead, right there with the camera. Like, I just want to make sure. I'm not saying you do anything right. I'm not saying you do anything wrong. But I'm just making sure I'm holding you accountable. Right? Accountability. The definition of cop watch is to record and document police activity. So when someone says they're doing cop watching, what are they doing? They're recording and documenting police activity. That doesn't mean that you're hounding cops waiting for them to, to jump. But what that does mean is you're very observant and when something does happen, you're very vigilant and ready to go. And in order for a cop watch team to be effective in our neighborhoods, it takes more than just the people who are willing to go out and who can go out. It takes the folks that are at home on base, so the person who can call the media, who can call the family, who can go to the precinct. And it takes the work of the theorists and the researchers that are socially justice, social justice oriented to be able to provide us with the theoretical breakdown so that our folks on the street can really do this. So Cop Watch dates back to the Black Panther Party, who used to patrol the streets with shotguns. Laws have obviously changed, so we're just continuing that legacy by patrolling the streets using video cameras. For us, it's really important to continue the legacy of Cop Watch, especially since police violence hasn't actually changed much and people are still being targeted. Some of the folks that are targeted the most are youth, especially youth of color. I'll give you an example. If I'm on the floor here and I'm being arrested like this, and you're recording me, right? Is standing there recording it enough? No. <laughs> Dep no, no, I want you to understand that it depends. Yeah. Because it depends on you as an individual. However far you're willing to go is what you're ready to do. Well, I think the reason that Cop Watch needs to be understood um, by youth and engaged in is number one because I think youth are one of the groups that are most directly affected by police violence, police abuse, police brutality. Um, as we've seen in the past year, um, or past several years. But being that young people are the ones who are getting criminalized and treated like criminals most of the time by these police, it's that much more important that young people not only know your rights and know when police are violating them, but also once you know your rights, you have the responsibility to watch out for your brother, 
to watch out for your sister and anybody else who's on the street getting messed with. Because realistically, it could be you next. So we really want y'all to come out, learn to cop watch, you know, gain the skills to protect your community and to save each other. And, and we, once we are all in that capacity, we're going to see these police, uh, you know, acting a whole lot different towards us. On November 6, 2013, we attended the Drop the Appeal rally for the Stop and Frisk policies held at City Hall. This rally, in conjunction with the Community Cop Watch Conference, not only demands for the end of the Stop and Frisk policies, but more importantly, the demand for Mayor Bloomberg's appeal of Judge Shenlin's ruling, deeming that Stop and Frisk is unconstitutional. This rally was by far the most important call for total community involvement against the unjust protocols of the NYPD against working class people, families, and youth of color in New York City. It is unfortunate that the Court of Appeals has delayed the, the much needed reform process. We are confident that the momentum of public support will carry the day. Judge Shinlin's decision was solid. It was based on enormous evidence presented during a nine-week trial and it affirmed what communities of color have known for years that the NYPD engages in racial profiling and it's time for it to stop. The communities that are representing here are speaking loud and clear. Drop the appeal. Support the Community Safety Act. Why? Because that's what you do as a leader. And instead of trying to let your legacy be remembered as someone who learn from their mistakes, who said it's time to unite a city. You're going down on the flames of repudiation because you want to beg people to continue a racist policy. Well, where we're at right now is that the Second Circuit Court has decided to stay the remedies. So it's not them saying that stop and frisk is going to continue, but, but they stayed the remedies process. While they didn't render a decision uh, that spoke to the issue of stop and frisk, um, they have delayed the ability to implement Judge Shenlin's decision because they felt that uh, she was overreaching in her personal concerns around the issue. And I came today because there's a, a lot of confusion about what some judges did uh, in the federal court case and people believing that they overturned the verdict and a whole bunch of stuff. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, so I want to make sure that there's an understanding that we in government have heard the people. They wanted to move in a direction that we are moving. Uh, they wanted to drop the appeal, which uh, uh, I'm sure will happen. But even if it didn't, I'm quite sure that we'd win on the appeal, just like we did in open court. We want to make sure that the ruling that came down this year in the Floyd versus New York City uh, court case stick and that Bloomberg drop his appeal against the remedies that the judge proposed. We know that there needs to be an independent outside monitor to look at the police going forward because up until now the police have not been able to kind of police themselves internally. So you need some type of outside independent institution or person that's going to hold the police accountable. You know, the, we've been working on this since the late 1990s. In 1999, we worked on a case called Daniels versus NYPD before the Floyd case. Same stop and frisk issues. So these communities, this movement has been building now for almost, 14, you know, be 14 years at the end of this year. So we want to see results now. We don't want any more delay. We don't want any more dragging it out. We don't want any more kicking the can down the road. We want remedies for our communities. And we don't want another generation of young people to grow up thinking that part of my everyday going from home to school is to be stopped and frisked by the police. We don't want that anymore. When we read the papers, we see the messages that they are celebrating the continued harassment of our young people, right? But you have an opportunity, Michael. You have the opportunity you know what I'm saying, to set a new message now. Is it gonna be politics as usual, or is it gonna be supporting our young people and being a true brother to their future? Drop the appeal, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.